Hey guys, in today's video, we'll take a look at two variants of the Akko 3087, a 10 keyless keyboard that looks really promising. I recently gave a really positive review about the Durgod K320, but this Akko keyboard looks like a pretty good contender, so let's see if that's the case. The Zero 3087 is a collaboration between Akko and Ducky, so it comes in a Ducky branded box with the same art style as other keyboards by Ducky. In the box, you'll get the keyboard protected by a plastic dust cover, and you'll get a USB-C cable as well as a wire keycap spooler. As for the 3087SP, you can expect the same unboxing experience, but you also get 9 additional orange keycaps for you to replace as you wish. Taking a look at their physical build, they share the same case and layout. This case seems to be made out of PBD plastic, it has a matte finish, so it will probably look great for a while and the overall keyboard has little flex, a tiny bit, but it's not too bad. Overall, it's a much better case design than what Ducky normally offers. It's more solid, more durable, and looks more premium in my opinion. Under the keyboard, you get four rubber pads, as well as two sets of feet for a total of three angle settings. All feet have rubber pads, so it won't move around however you set them. And finally, you also get three channels to route your USB-C cable. Both of these boards perfectly respect the typical NC layout for 10 keyless keyboards, which means they're only missing the numpad. They're both PBD keycaps with side legends, but the similarities stop there. The Zero 3087 has cherry profile keycaps, so they basically have slightly lower height, and their legends are double shot with a material that lets light shine through. The 3087SP on the other hand has OEM profile keycaps, so pretty much the standard out there. And the legends are only pad printed though, so it won't be as durable. It's not the end of the world as the side surface doesn't wear over time, but it's still worth noting, I think. Now to the switches, both of these are offered with Cherry MX switches. The Zero comes with reds or browns, while the SP also comes with blues. The Zero version has transparent housings though, as it has RGB LEDs, while the SP variant has regular black housings, as it doesn't have any LEDs. I went with all different switches on my unit, so I can't easily compare them, but they're all great. I mean, they're cherry, so pretty standard. They both sit on a nice metal plate, although one is white to help LEDs shine brighter, while the other is painted black. One thing that's quite different though are the stabilizers. I expected these to come with the same stabs, but the Ducky variant has white stabilizers, while the 3087SP has black and red stabilizers. I have to say the white stabs are much better, they rattle less. Not that the 3087SP has bad stabs, but they're definitely not as great. In fact, the Ducky variant is close to what the Duragod K320 felt like, so I'll leave you to a sound test between these boards to give you an idea. Typing on these keyboards is amazing. I'd say both are really great, but the Zero 3087 is truly amazing. The better stabilizers do help, these cherry reds are really really smooth, and it sounds really good. I've heard that Ducky did some binning on their switches, I don't know if that's true, but I could believe it's true for this keyboard. Really really pleased with how it feels, especially with these cherry profile keycaps. As I said earlier, only the Zero 3087 has LEDs, in that case they're RGB, although you don't get any software with this keyboard, so you need to control them on board. For that, you get 6 light effect categories accessible through Function and Insert, Home, Page Up, Page Down, and, and Delete. You can also adjust the brightness with Function and Arrow Up or Down, and switch between available colors with Function and Right Arrow. I wasn't able to set key by key colors, but otherwise the animation and FX selection is really great and the colors look amazing. 
The white color is some of the best I've seen on an RGB keyboard too. You can also reprogram any keys to what you like or to a macro, however there are no English instructions available, so I wasn't able to fully test that feature. But by searching around on the web, I got to the following steps. First you hold function and left windows key to enter the macro layer, then you hit function and escape to start recording, then function plus the key you want to assign the macro to, so I'll go with the pipe key in my case. Then you press the sequence you want and hit function plus the key for which the macro will be assigned to to finish the sequence and then function plus escape again to stop recording. If you stay under that macro layer, the keys you selected should now play back the sequence you recorded and you can go back to the standard layer by holding down function and left windows key. Still, on a 10 keyless keyboard, I feel like this isn't as necessary than with a 65 or 60% board. So let's go with the pros and cons with these keyboards. The Zero version currently sells for $115, while the SP sells for $94, and for the 20-ish dollar difference, I'd go with the Zero, honestly. The typing experience is better, the keycaps have double shot legends, and I prefer their profile. And they also have LEDs, which are super vibrant. On the other hand, the SP version is cheaper and that's always a nice thing. The stabilizers, while inferior, are still decent and the keycaps are still PBD. And if you don't care about LEDs, then it's a great option. As a plus, it comes with themed keycaps, while the other is all black. And you can even get the Ocean Star theme, which I think looks amazing. The main downsides are the lack of a software to go in depth with customizability. Although having everything on board is a nice thing if you use your board on different computers. Other than that, there's not too much to complain about, honestly. Like I said in the intro, I recently reviewed the Durga Nebula K320 and it compares really well to the Zero 3087. Both sell for the same price, they're all black, have great RGB LEDs, they both offer a near perfect typing experience with amazing stabilizers, they come with Cherry MX switches, offer PBD double shot keycaps, triangle adjustments with rubber pads and three channels to route your cables. Honestly, they're pretty much the same keyboard. The main differences are the side legends and cherry profile on the Echo, while the Durgat has top legends with an OEM profile. The Durgat has better double shot technique though, as the closed legends don't have slits and it comes with a software to customize everything from key remappings to RGB LEDs. I would personally go with the Durgat K320 by a slight edge for those reasons, but if you're really into side legends or cherry profile keycaps, then the Echo Zero 3087 is definitely not a bad choice. So that wraps it up for today. These keyboards are really good. We're getting at a point where there are so many great options at a decent price without too many major flaws and that's really amazing. Let me know your thoughts down below. Would you consider getting one of these in the future? As always, I'll have affiliate links down below so you can check out this keyboard for yourself and help the channel at the same time. So thank you for watching. Make sure you leave a like if you did and if you didn't, just let me know why down below. Otherwise, don't forget to subscribe if you still haven't already as I'll see you in the next video.